All right, welcome back to Power and Politics here in Ottawa. Carleton University and the University of Ottawa are hosting Israel Apartheid Week. It's an annual event on campuses in Canada and it's growing around the world. This event draws a very pointed parallel between Israel's treatment of Palestinians and South Africa's notorious apartheid policy inflicted on its black majority for decades. Advocate of what's called the IAW call it an expression of free speech. Its detractors call it anti-Semitic. Today, by the way, uh, Michael Ignatieff, the leader of the Liberal Party, came out very much against anti-Israel uh, Apartheid Week, but with both sides of the debate now, I'm joined now by Ben Safer, one of the organizers of Israeli Apartheid Week here at Carleton University in Ottawa. And in Toronto, I'm joined by Marvin Kurtz, uh, Kurz with uh, B'nai B'rith. Uh, ben, I want to start with you first. Uh, give us an idea of what is uh, Israel Apartheid Week and why you use the word apartheid when you associate it with Israel. Well, there are two goals to Israeli Apartheid Week. The first goal is to raise this analysis of Israel as an apartheid state. And when we talk about apartheid, we're talking about um, um, discrimination from the state um, between two groups of people. So when it comes to Israel, it's between Jewish Israelis and Palestinian Arabs. I mean, this type of separation has to do with um, separate roads in the West Bank, um, checkpoints, um, different legal systems between Palestinians and Jews in the West Bank. Um, within Israel proper, there's um, different legal systems, or not different legal systems, there's differential rights when it comes to land use. And within the Gaza Strip itself, you have one and a half million Palestinians Palestinians under the control of Israel, but who are in the middle of a siege, um, who don't have access to materials because of the Israeli state. So we see this as apartheid, discrimination by Jewish Israelis over Palestinian Arabs. Uh, Marvin, what's the opposition? There's lots of criticism about, the, obviously, the Israeli treatment of Palestinians, but what's the answer to this calling Israel an apartheid state? Well, uh, th the description of Israel as, a, as an apartheid state is a libel. It's, uh, it's an attempt to delegitimize Israel. Apartheid isn't simply uh, a descriptive term. It's a term of art in international law. Under international law, the notion of apartheid is a crime against humanity. So the whole notion of apartheid and Israel as an apartheid state is an attempt to say that Israel doesn't have the right to exist. And you can tell that from the posters this year from Israel Apartheid Week, which are based on boycott, divestment, and de delegitimization. Uh, last year's had uh, an Israeli helicopter uh, trying to blow up a little boy. I mean, it, it's, it's trying to find the most gross... Um, the, the cro most gross libel that can be used against Israel as a way of saying that Israel doesn't have the right to exist. And that's what's so problematic about it. It's, if, if it was uh, human rights in Palestine week or something like that, then that would be very different. But using this loaded term apartheid, it used to be that uh, Israel was described as a Nazi state, the new term is apartheid. Using it closes down debate. There's no room to, for debate when you start off by calling Israel an illegitimate state. There's, no, there's nothing to discuss. Israel doesn't have the right to exist. Ben, and anybody who supports it has got to be wrong. Ben, ben it is a, obviously a very loaded term. It, it applies to a very specific situation. But given the fact that there is an open dialogue about human rights abuses uh, with the Palestinian security concerns, I mean, both sides have legitimate uh, arguments to be made. Why choose that specific term, which seems to inflame so many passions? Well, I think, um, as my colleague from B'nai B'rith uh, mentioned, Apartheid is a legal term. It comes from the 1973 UN Convention on Apartheid. So we're not throwing this around just to inflame passions. We're using this according to its legal definition because we believe that Israel is an apartheid state and we urge people to come to events to actually see what our analysis is. Now the interesting thing is our keynote speaker is actually Jamal Zahalka, who's a member of the Israeli Knesset. So in Canada, um, parliamentarians are saying that you shouldn't be calling Israel an apartheid state. They're condemning even, you know, this week. But then we're bringing Israeli parliamentarians who are saying the same thing. So it's not as odious as some Canadian parliamentarians want to say. Speaking of that, today, uh, let's see, the, here's what Michael Ignatieff. Arab... Uh, Michael Ignatieff issued this statement today. On university campuses across the country this week, Israeli Apartheid Week will once again attempt to demonize and undermine the legitimacy of the Jewish state. It's part of a global campaign of calls for divestment, boycotts, and proclamations. It should be condemned unequivocally and absolutely. Ontario MPPs, by the way, also 
uh, voted unanimously last week to denounce uh, this year's uh, uh, Israel Apartheid Week. But, but Marvin, uh, r respond to that. Like, in Israel, this debate's going on, and, and Ben talks about an Israeli parliamentarian coming to talk about that. What, what you, the, the irony of saying that Israel is an apartheid state when there is an Arab parliamentarian who, uh, who obviously is, is a member of the Knesset. Uh, if Israel is such an apartheid state, um, why are there Arab members of Knesset? But even more to the point is, why is Israel singled out as the lone apartheid state? In, in a world of human rights abusers, people like Ben and their confreres find only Israel. Like, if you want to talk about apartheid as being some kind of discrimination, isn't there discrimination throughout the Arab world? Isn't there gender discrimination? Uh, I certainly couldn't move to, uh, to Egypt, to Saudi Arabia. Uh, in Dubai, where, where there's an allegation that the Israelis uh, killed a Hamas operative, um, a year ago, an Israeli tennis player was thrown out simply because of her nationality. Um, the, I don't hear Sudan Apartheid Week when uh, the Janjaweed were slaughtering hundreds of thousands of people just because of their ethnicity. On university campuses, all that we have is one, one kind of week. And the whole point is Ben says, well, I want you to come and perhaps you can hear our point of view. But there are no two points of view. Once you've posited that Israel is the only apartheid state in the world, in a world where China is doing all of these I, I things. I think there are a number of points that were brought up that I want to address. First of all, there's a lot of um, smear tactics at the organizers of Israeli Apartheid Week. People call us anti-Semitic. People call us organizing a hate fest. Or people like myself, one of the many Jewish organizers of Israeli Apartheid Week, people call us self-hating Jews. So I find often, instead of looking at the message, people will attack the motivations of the organizers. So that's one thing. Um, and when it comes down to it... But I yeah, haven't mentioned yes, that, Ben. I yes, haven't even are, mentioned that. Yes, we are calling for boycott, divestment, and sanctions. And we are specifically targeting Israel for boycott, divestments, and sanctions. But the reason for that is twofold. First of all, this is what Palestinian civil society has called for, for people who support their human rights. They've said, if you support us, work in your local communities. If you're in a church, get it to divest. If you're in a university, get it to divest. And this is a way, like with South Africa, that we can support pe uh, peaceful and just solutions. But, so but do you, how do you address, just that, Ben, sure. how do you address the other side, when the Israeli side says, what about our security concern? What, right. what about that side? Of course. Well, I mean, Obviously, I mean, people are hurt on all sides of this conflict, and that's something that I will not negate by any means. But I think the way to find security for all people is not by entrenching occupation, is not by entrenching discrimination. I think that these discriminatory policies, this occupation, these apartheid policies okay. are what lead to violence. Uh, all right, Marvin, last word to you. Well, I mean, it, it, the irony is that... Uh, it, Nothing could be more discriminatory than to label one state and one set of supporters as being crimes against humanity. It, it posits Israel as the Jew among nations. It's anti-Semitic only because it treats Israel, the only Jewish state, as the only state deserving of those massive sanctions and the only state that's deserving of that kind of opprobrium. All right, uh, Marvin Kurz from B'nai B'rith in Toronto and here in Ottawa, Ben Safer, a student uh, at uh, Carleton University. I appreciate both of you coming in today. Thanks. Thank you. That's an ongoing debate and we'll be seeing that uh, all week. Coming up, a stable economy and a sustainable environment. It can be done. We're going to hear from the group that is proposing how Ottawa go about finding this balance. That's coming up next on Power and Politics.